In this chapter, we'll take a look at defining and declaring variables. Now, declaring a variable is basically reserving a space in the computer memory for a given value to be placed in. This value can then be used or accessed by my application whenever it needs to. To declare a new variable, you simply write var for variable and then the variable name, then colon, then the variable type. So I'll just write my number and then a colon and then the variable type which is going to be a number and then a semicolon to end your statement. Let's start by the variable name. There are actually there are actually some rules to how can you name a variable. First it can't contain any special characters. Now a special character is something like the uh, exclamation point, the at sign, the hashtag, dollar sign, uh, percentage, any of those characters, even parentheses, curly, curly brackets, brackets, all of those characters are banned from, are not allowed to be used as a variable name. The variable name can contain numbers, but the number can't be at the beginning of my variable name. So this is not a valid variable name. It can contain underscores, but no spaces. So this is not a valid variable name. So let's say I had a variable name composed of two of two words, like I have here. How can I tell them apart? Well, one thing you can do is use the underscore as a spacing. So my underscore number is a valid variable name, and you can tell the two words apart. Another thing you can do is use what is called camel casing, which is what I have here. Whenever I start a new word, I start it off capitalized. So if I wanted my variable number to be composed of three words, let's say my uh, integer number, this is a valid variable number, and I can tell the words apart since each new word is capitalized. This is very common actually, and this is how I'm going to be naming my variables from now on. So if you're comfortable with that, that is good. If you want to use the underscore for spacing, that is also pretty much accepted. So do it however you feel comfortable with. One thing you should notice here is that ActionScript is a case-sensitive language. Now what does case-sensitive mean is that this name here is different from, let's say, this name. Since this one contains a capital N and this one doesn't, I can't have two variables containing the same name since that will give me an error. But in this case, those two names, my number and my number with a capital N, are different. So for action script, an uppercase N and a lowercase n are two completely different things. He will treat each one as a different name. So I can have my number with a small n and my number with a capital N as two distinct valid variable names. So just as a recap, a variable name can only contain letters, numbers, as long as they're not at the beginning of my variable name, underscores, and no spaces. And I can use camel casing to distinguish words apart or simply use the underscore sign. A colon determines that I'm done with naming my variable and what I'm going to type next will be the variable type. Now there are lots of variable types to consider. Number is one of them. A variable type determines what value I'm going to place within my variable. Number means any type of numbers. Integers, float numbers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, so I can put radical 2 within my number since radical 2 is a number. If I set my number to being an integer, I cannot put radical 2 within my number since radical 2 is not an integer. This will cause an error. So why is this important? Why can't I just define all numbers to as numbers? Well, this is because number consumes more memory space than the integer. So if I only needed an integer, I can set my variable as an integer to save memory. 
As for the different types of variables, there are many to consider. Some of them are number, integer, boolean, string, timers, accelerometer, and so on. Don't worry about this, we will get in each and every single one of those in detail whenever we get to them. But what I want to talk about now is the string variable. Now a string is basically text variable. So if I wanted to define a new variable, I'll call it my text and colon, then the type of the variable, which is string, and then a semicolon to end my statement. So now I can put some text within my text variable. To do that, I can either declare it immediately by setting it equal to open quotations. This is some text. Then the then close the double quotations and a semicolon to end my statement. Or I can do this another way by typing my text and set it equal to this right here. So copy, paste. Now this is some text is set inside my text. And either one of those is a 100% valid method of setting values to variables. Same way I can define my number. Let's leave it as, you know what, let's leave, let's, let's leave it as an integer and set it equal to seven. So now, since my text is a defined variable, I can put it within my trace statement. So trace, and I do not need the double quotations because now my text is defined. So I can simply write my text in the, in the trace statement. And let's put another trace statement. And within it, well, let's put my number, my number and control enter to test your movie here we have this is here we have this is some text and the number seven which is my text and my number let's say I put my text within double quotations and I did the same for my number then Action script won't actually process what my text is because of the double quotations. That means it's going to ignore whatever is within those double quotations and simply output it as it is. So control enter test your movie. We have my text and my number. Just a quick note that within double quotations we can have some special characters. It wouldn't even matter because of the existence of the double quotations. So whatever value or whatever items are included within the double quotations are simply ignored and output it as they are. As we can see here. Let's say I wanted to put 7.5 within my integer variable. So let's remove the double quotations and test our movie. We see that action script only deals with the integer part of my number. That is because my number is set to an integer. So in order to display 7.5, we need to change the type of my number into a number. As we can see, 7.5. Pretty straightforward. One last note here is that the casing of the variable type is very important. So if I had my number with the lowercase n, then control enter test my movie, I will have that uh, I will have an error saying type was not found or was not a compile time constant number. That means that the type number with a lowercase n is not a valid variable type. And you can see that you've typed the variable name correctly when it changes color. That means that this now is a reserved word in ActionScript. So ActionScript knows what a number with an uppercase N is, and a string for that matters. So again, if I had string with the, let's say, uppercase T, it doesn't recognize it. It has to be case correct. 
And just a quick note, we can customize the colors that this text turns into by going to Edit Preferences on a PC or Flash Preferences on a Mac. Here we can go to the Code Editor and choose the custom color set we want. So, as you can see, we have the standard text set as black. So any text that is not predefined in uh, ActionScript will be set to black. The background is white. Keywords are set to violet. Now keywords are the declaring words. So whenever I declare a variable, I will need to write var. So this declares a new variable. So var is a keyword. Strings are green. Strings are the text within double quotations. Identifiers those identifiers are set by identifiers are blue and comments are gray now comments are a pretty essential part of coding everything that is common won't be executed it's just simply a way for the programmer to write some notes there are two ways to write comments if I close this here you can simply do it by writing double forward slashes. Notice that it turns gray and then write whatever the note you want to. This is a note. So everything after these double forward slashes won't be executed. ActionScript simply ignores whatever after these double forward slashes and moves on with the code after it. The double forward slashes is good for only one line of comment. So I can type whatever I want within this line and once I hit enter, the next line won't be commented. So if I want to start a comment on a new line, I will have to retype the double forward slashes and then write whatever comment I want to. I can also comment a trace statement or a predefined function within ActionScript. Then ActionScript will simply ignore this statement and move on to the one after it. So if I wanted to comment a block of code, I don't want to be retyping double forward slashes every time I move to a new line. So luckily there is another way. Simply go to the beginning of the code you want to comment, type forward slash and then an asterisk. Then go to the end of the code you want to comment and then write asterisk forward slash. Now this block of code is all commented without typing double forward slashes at the beginning of each line you want to comment. Commenting a code has other benefits than simply writing notes. Let's say I have a, bl a big block of code and it's causing me some errors. And I suspect that the error is coming from a specific line or a specific block of this block of code. But I don't want to delete this code, I just simply want to temporarily remove it so I can see if this solved the problem. Then I can go over it and fix whatever is causing the problem. So I can simply comment this portion of the code and then see if this solves the problem. Then I know for sure that this part of the code is causing me the problems. Then I can make for sure that this part of the code is the source of the problem without deleting the actual code. So a simple recap to what we learned in this lesson. We can define variables by writing var a space, then the name of the variable. Again, the name of a variable can only contain letters, upper or lowercase, numbers, as long as they're not at the beginning of my variable name, and underscores with no spaces or special characters. Then colon, then the variable type, and we can set the value of the variable by simply writing equals and then the value we want to assign to it, and then a semicolon to end our statement. Or we can do this by going to a new line, typing the name of the variable, and then setting it equal to the value we want it to be set to. And we also learned about how to comment our code. And again, we'll be going in more detail about each variable type as we move along in this course.